why do African countries seem not to be in good terms with Russia, even though Russia got good intentions with Africa? This is one of the most uncommon discussions, but it's got some pretty insightful reasons as to why things are like this. And to help us understand this intricate and multifaceted question, a sister steps into the scene and offers some pretty interesting and remarkable answers to this phenomenal question. So if you're a black person, an African person, or maybe you're just somebody that is interested in learning about geopolitical phenomenons, then you've come to the right channel. With that being said, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to become part of our community. Our videos are dedicated to offering you, our viewers, with insightful and educative breakdown videos that will leave you mind blown. I am your host, and in today's video, we journey through the tormacious landscape of the relationship dynamic between Russia and black people or Africans. What could be the reason as to why Russia is perceived as fierce and not a worthy ally with African countries? Hello. I want all Africans or Akabulans or the Bantu people, whatever we decide to call ourselves in the future, in the very nearest future, please gather here. I want to ask us a question. Why is it that some of us are talking trash against Russia? Do we think freedom is very easy to get? Take a look around the world. Russia is the only country that has not invaded any African country. If you have one African country that Russia has invaded and is in control of, let me, let me hear it on the comment section. Russia did not also invent or has not invented any virus with an agenda to eradicate the black race. You know the people that have done that, they did it to South Africa. HIV was invented to eradicate the black people in, in Africa, in South Africa. We have seen these videos. Africa, wake up. If someone is not against you, that means that person is with you. It doesn't have to come out to tell you that it's with you. Russia is not among those that shared African countries like a piece of cake in Berlin conference. Go and check your history very well. Russia is not among the countries that went to Berlin to share African countries like their property. Russia is not, is not among them. Check your history. Russia did not take part in the buying, in the unaliving of Gaddafi of Libya. Russia did not take part in the unaliving of MK or Abiola. We knew how that man was killed in the prison, Nigerian prison. Russia did not take part in the buying and the unaliving of Professor Patrice Lumumba. Russia did not take part in the unaliving of Kwame Krumah. Russia did not take part in the unaliving of Thomas Sankara. Russia did not take part in the unaliving of Emmanuel Kotoka of Ghana. There is a mystery behind the African people, behind the black race. For you to be able to, to eradicate the black race from the surface of this earth, you must first of all destroy that mystery. And the mystery, a mystery is something you cannot see. You can't touch it. So how can you destroy it? This is how the black race is. It's like that. Whether you like it or not, the black race has come to stay. The black race, race is mother health. The black race cannot be eradicated the black race you can do everything to suppress the voice of the black race but at, a, at the more you try to suppress the voice of the black race the more you try to use your your your, your chemical to reduce the, the population of the black race the more they rise the more they were stronger the more they, 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 they increase in population isn't this a mystery to you it's a mystery let me tell you the reason why they see Russia, they see Russia as a threat. It's because Russia has what they have. Europe, allow Africa to be. Get your 50 ends out of Africa resources. Allow Africa to be. The generation of Africa today, they are gonna swallow you up, just like you see in this picture. If you don't allow Africa to be, Africa will swallow you up. We do not have weapon, but we have a weapon that we are going to use to swallow you up. We we'll open our mouth and we'll swallow you up. Why you are coming to take gold? Gold is in that mouth. You see that mouth that is open, wide open by our mother? Africa is motherland, okay? That is the symbol of our land, motherland. You see, as the mouth is all wide open, which lot of gold you love gold a lot you love uranium you love iphone you love electronics you love digital digital uh, uh, apple appliance right you get in that mark to get the gold by force to get the uranium by force to get crude oil to get everything that you need in our uh, in our land 
that mouth is Africa. The motherland. Open her mouth and she's gonna swallow you. Let Africa be Europe. Let Africa be. Stop the bleeding of the Congo people. What I want my African people to know, my Akabulans, my Bantu people to know is this. Whatever you think you have in your in your lands, okay? Russia has it in abundance. Russia has gas. They have oil, they have crude oil, they have petrol. Do you know why Russia is hated today by the West? Russia is hated because Russia was one of the country that, were, that never supported the, the slave trade. Russia did not support the invasion, the colonial masters and gender. Russia did not, was not in support of it. One of the reasons why they also hate Russia is because Russia has refused or have rejected the LGBTQ that these people are promoting. Russia rejected the LGBTQ. You understand? So these are some of the reasons they, are hate, they hate Russia so much. Africa, you must know your enemy. Africa, you must fight rightly. Africa, don't fight who is not fighting you. Uganda and Rwanda, they are about to have conflicts because of UK. UK bringing all African migrants back to Rwanda. The Rwanda government accepted to, 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 to accommodate African migrants, knowing fully why he doesn't have the capacity to do so. But because he has collected much money from the UK government and he allows all the migrants to be running into Rwanda. For that reason, Rwanda government is telling him, I am going to fight you if you don't stop these refugees from trooping into my country. This is how a Western country will bring conflict between two African countries. When are you going to wake up? Africa, wake up! Wake up! You know the right thing to do. All this struggle, all this puppet to put in power to rule you. They are puppets. They are not fighting for your interests. They are there to to to. They are there to to accumulate wealth for the generation unborn. They don't care about you. They don't care about your children. They just want to continue to remain puppets. That is it. So it, the, the, the choice is yours. The solution is in your hands. Shake them out of office. Burkina Faso got it right. Mali got it right. Niger got it right. What are you waiting for, Nigeria? What are you waiting for, Ghana? What are you waiting for, Sierra Leone? What are you waiting for, and uh, uh, Togo? What are you ready waiting for, Cote uh, Cote d'Ivoire? What are you guys waiting for? Now is the time. Wake up, motherland is calling you. I think this perception as Russia being fierce and not a worthy ally to African countries began with the whitewashing of the historical figure known as Jesus. And before you get confused, the blueprint of it all started from the whitewashing of historical figures and I think that's where they learned to misrepresent other countries in a negative way in media. And in a few moments I'm gonna talk about this to explain and get into the nitty gritties as to how Russia through negative portrayal in media representation may have enhanced a negative fierce and unworthy ally perception in the minds of Africans. But before we get to that let us first answer their question uh, as to why Russia never participated in colonizing any African country. So the era of European colonialism in Africa is marked by the expansion of western powers in the continent leading to the subjugation and exploitation of indigenous peoples and resources. However, conspicuously absent from this narrative is Russia, which notably refrained from participating in the colonization of Africa. Let's look at geopolitical focus. One significant factor that contributed to Russia's absence from Africa colonialism was its geopolitical focus on other regions. Throughout history, Russia has primarily directed its expansionist efforts towards Eastern Europe, Central Asia and Siberia. The vast territorial expanse of Russia coupled with its strategic interests in these regions left little incentive or capacity for colonial expansion in Africa. Mind you, this is just an essay that I'm reading uh, to guide us through some of the reasons, historically speaking, internal challenges and reforms. Additionally, Russia grappled with internal challenges and reforms during the period of European colonialism in Africa. The late 19th and early 20th centuries saw Russia undergoing significant political, social, and economic transformations, including the abolition of serfdom. Industrialization and modernization also played a crucial role. These internal dynamics demanded considerable resources and attention, diverting focus away from overseas colonial ambitions. And what that means is they were more focused on industrializing themselves rather than going in a foreign land and acquiring resources from that land because they had their own resources. They were not gonna use other excess resources to get people 
would become slaves and the whole process of it all. Perhaps some leaders wanted to do this while other leaders saw more opportunity in Russia uh, colonizing or maybe expanding its influence to Siberia and other places. Strategic alliances and rivalries. Russia's geopolitical position and strategic alliances also played a role in its approach to colonialism. Unlike many Western countries or powers, Russia did not possess significant novel capabilities to establish and maintain distance colonial possessions. Instead, Russia focused on expanding its influence through territorial acquisitions in neighboring regions and diplomatic alliances with other European powers. So Russia saw that if it made efforts to expand in a foreign land, it was going to use a lot of resources in the process. Hence, they just aimed at expanding their influence in neighboring uh, places, as we've read. Cultural and ideological factors. Furthermore, cultural and ideological factors may have influenced Russia's approach to colonialism. Unlike the overtly imperialist ideologies of Western European colonial powers, Russia's expansionist ambitions were often framed within the context of empire building and territorial integrity rather than overt colonization. Additionally, Russia's historical ties with Orthodox Christianity and its multi-ethnic composition may have shaped its perceptions of imperialism and colonial domination. So they are saying Russia because of a cultural heritage that it had and because of the relationship they had with Christianity or Christian Orthodox, they had a higher moral high ground that prevented them from participating in colonialism. And that is the reason why some of the times in our discussions, we say the lack of a cultural heritage when it comes to palm coloreds makes them lack empathy, hence becoming racially biased more than other races. Because if you have a cultural heritage, that foundation is going to be used to prevent you from engaging in shady things sometimes, as we've seen in the case of Russia. And sometimes you see how uh, palm coloreds perpetuate stereotypes towards marginalized communities. And at the end of it all, they also adopt the culture uh, from that community that they were portraying stereotypes towards, which is sort of ironic. Now that we've looked at the historical context of it all, let's answer this question. How did Russia become an unworthy ally to African countries? Through media representation, of course. When it comes to movies portraying enemies or bad guys, don't you just ask yourself why most of the times you find a Russian enemy in a movie? You know, and comedians have joked about this. Comedians like Trevor Noah, I remember a stand-up comedy he did talking about why Russians are fierce in movies. It's because of their accent and things like that. But not necessarily. It's just that through media representation, they made us hate it. A huge bad guy with a fierce accent. Just think about it. It's the perfect narrative of what an enemy would look like. The portrayal of countries in negative way in media representations, particularly movies, can have profound and wide-ranging effects on how people perceive, interact with, and engage with those nations. From reinforcing stereotypes and misrepresentations to impacting tourism, economy, and diplomatic relations. The big three of any country. So if you know Julius Malema, uh, a political leader from South Africa, then you're familiar with an interview that he did with the Palm Colored. And he told the Palm Colored interviewer to say, we're making a partnership with the Russians. And the Palm Colored interviewer asked him, are you not afraid of dealing with the Russians? And he was like, why should I be afraid? They have offered help to us in more ways than the West has ever done. And the interviewer was mind blown. Now, this is to show you that media representation is very powerful because even some palm coloreds are buying into the narrative that Russia is very fierce and it shouldn't be dealing with any country apart from itself. And growing up, I remember how old people used to tell us that what we are watching in movies is exactly what happens, you know. But after many, many years, when social media emerged and technology became advanced, we started understanding that these were just actors and the things we saw in movies were not real. But I think most African countries are left with this narrative of what they used to see in movies was the real thing. Hence brings us back to the whitewashing of Jesus. The white Jesus we saw in movies is what most people have widely accepted as their savior and messiah, even though it wasn't true. And it's also very interesting to see that Russia is the only country that unveiled to us that Jesus was actually black. Isn't that interesting? So could Russia be the good guy, but has been forcefully misrepresented in movies? You tell me. But all in all, media is a powerful tool to enhance the perceptions of countries, people, and nations in people's minds. Now you tell me what you think about today's video, and if you found it interesting or insightful, like, share, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.